In this section, let's look at how we can utilize Nuke's 3D space to create and add additional elements to our shots. Because Nuke has a full 3D environment, we can use it to supplement tasks without having to go back to the 3D application. The 3D space can really help to assist our day-to-day -day compositing. We can bring in geometry through a read geo node from production, and we can pick and choose what pieces of the geometry we want visible on import. We can opt to import geometry as a parent and child relationship, and then create separate nodes for each of these pieces of geometry. This becomes especially useful if you want to use the geometry as masks for elements in your shot that may not have been rendered out as AOVs. I'm a huge advocate for using the 3D space for these types of tasks. It's going to really help speed up your workflow. We can always change what was loaded in through the node at a later time, so don't worry about committing and having to step back if you decide to change directions. Now, one interesting thing that we can do to our advantage is bring in locators or nulls that were created in the DCC. Nuke will read these in separately as an access node, and that's going to give us some position information that we can use to our advantage. This locator was constrained to a piece of geometry that was done inside of the 3D scene. This means that we can use this position information and we're going to add an element that's going to move correctly and match the render. We're also going to need the 3D camera from the scene for this to work out. We don't need to put our element in the exact same spot as the locator in this case, which is going to give us some freedom of movement. And we have a sign that I've modified and I want to add it and have it be attached to this crab trap that's going to be moving throughout the shot. We can add this to a card node so that our sign is now in 3D space. We can then add a transform geo node and plug the access node into the access input of the transform geo. This means wherever that cage goes, our sign is going to travel along with it. We can take it a step further by adding an additional transform geo node right before and let's offset the pivot. Now we can add additional animation of the rotation to the sign. We can go through and set some keyframes. And now we've added a second layer of animation. Let's look through the scan line render. We can adjust the sampling and motion blur attributes, and we can tweak anything else that we need for the output. And then we'll do some color correction to integrate it into our shot. The great thing about this is that we have the ability to modify the look of the sign on the fly. We can also tweak the position of the sign. We can alter the look while getting feedback right away. We can add more elements because we have the animation information from the axis. Let's add some bubbles to the other side of the cage. We've selectively loaded some of the geometry for the cage so we can add a fill mat node and plug it into the geometry. Now it's being used as a mask for our bubbles and the bubbles can now be both in front and behind the cage. We can swap the element out maybe for some kelp that has been growing in the cage over time. We really have the flexibility to add additional elements to our 3D animation directly inside of Nuke. Another thing we can do is add additional light passes by relighting our shot. Now this becomes extremely useful for saving time and tweaking the shot with real-time feedback. We're going to need a relight node and a position to points node to drive this setup. Let's first look at the position to points. Now we need normals and a position pass to utilize this. So this can be derived from the render passes that were outputted and that can be a standard part of your AOV setup for your project. We want a position pass for the geometry's X, Y, Z information and a normal pass for the lighting and shading information that we want to apply. We're going to also need a color pass, but this can be arbitrary as we only want to pull out some additional light hits. Now we have a unique situation here. We don't have those passes, but it's okay because we can create them inside of Nuke. We need our geometry and our camera for the shot imported into the scene, which will allow us to create these passes. In our scan line render, we want to output vectors. For our surface point, we want position. So we can create a new channel and call it position. 
We want 3D information, so we're gonna add X, Y, Z to the channels. Now our surface point is linked to it and we have a new channel called position. We wanna do the same thing for our surface normal. So we're gonna make a new channel, call it normals. We also want the X, Y, Z information. So now we're outputting this information throughout our comp. We can shuffle out these passes from the X, Y, Z to RGB. And now we have them ready for our position to points node. Again, if we have these passes from our render, we don't have to do this step. We can plug in our color information to the node, our positions, and then our normals. We now have the information the camera sees in our 3D viewer via the points, so we can start to relight. Let's create a light and we can use any type of light for this. We'll use a point light and put it into a rough position. So now we can use our relight node. The relight node wants color, which will be the output from our render, lights, which we've just set up, a camera, which is the imported camera from the scene, and a material. So we're gonna tell the node what the normal and the position pass is called. Now for the material slot, we can use different shaders in here. Now in this case, we wanna use a specular shader. So we're gonna use specular and we'll plug it in. And then now we have a result. So we can go ahead and tweak the light position and get instantaneous feedback. We can adjust the material properties as well until we have something that we like. After this, we can plus the result on top of a render. And just like that, we've added additional lighting to the shot directly from Nuke. Because we've done it this way, we get a real light hit that will follow the curvature of the geometry and won't have that fake look. If you're new to this process, you can select tool sets, go under the 3D section, and check out the Relight tool set to get started on it. Nuke can bring in UDIM textures for your model, which will allow you to make modifications to the texture that has a texture setup that goes beyond the one-to-one -one texture layout. You can create a UDIM import node and point to a set of textures. You have some options that you can use, and then you want to hit OK. You'll get a setup complete with frame holds, UV tiles, and merge material nodes. You also get this multi-texture node, which optimizes the merge mats. Now that we have access to the texture information, we can add additional texture to the model. I have this slime texture and I want some slime to drip off the crab's head. I've added some effects to the image to give it some movement using the eye distort node and a transform node. I'm going to use this to place it on top of the crab's head. Because I have texture information and the model uses UDIMs, I can pinpoint exactly where I want to place it. Once I've done that, I want to disable the original texture as I don't need it and I get feedback on the position. As Soon as I have it roughed out, I can animate a roto shape over time to give it the appearance of slime dripping down. The sky is the limit with this approach. Uh, we can be adding additional noise, putting stock footage on top of this, animate attributes on any of the nodes that make up our effect. And we're not gonna have to worry about where to position things and we're gonna use the UDIM importer to make this happen. This becomes a really handy approach when we're adding additional effects to our shots. Let's look at how we can utilize Nuke's 3D space to project images onto geometry, which can give us additional effects on top of our render. I have an image sequence of caustics and I wanna project this onto our 3D model for the shot to add a little bit of additional lighting. I've imported the geometry as well as the camera I'm gonna duplicate the camera and delete the animation on it at a frame where I feel it provides a good visual coverage of the model. This is gonna be our projection camera. We can create a project 3D node and plug in our texture and our projection camera into this node. 
So the Project 3D will be plugged into our geometry for the model and then fed into a scene node. From here, we use a scan line render to render our pass, and this can be plussed or screened on top of our render. We now have our caustic sticking to the model and scaling correctly to match the camera's movement. We can be using these projections in many ways. We can project a render of a set environment onto the geometry of the set, and then we can use that as a background inside of Nuke. It's quite a flexible approach, and we're looking at just one of the ways that we can utilize this for our animation production to help to add to our render.